And now it's time once again for Celebrity Dungeons and Dragons. Here, as always, is your host and Dungeon Master, Sean Connery. That's Sir Sean Connery, mind you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us for the first time, we're here for a fantasy role-playing session unlike any other, where a band of bold adventurers step into a strange land of magic, monsters, and scantily clad lashes. There will be danger, there will be excitement, and there will be light bondage. I am, of course, contractually obligated to be here, but we've got a great group of players this week. First up, Oscar-winning actor Al Pacino. Hooah! Next, we have former actor and even more former politician Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. And legendary Hollywood icon James Jimmy Stewart. Well, hello, Sir Sean. Pleased to be here, though I, I'm afraid I, I don't really understand the rules. That's fine. Neither does the writer. Look, it'll be like the world's most anal retentive improv session. But with dice. Well, a single die. One with twenty shines. I still don't understand. Where are we? What are we doing? We're playing pretend. Like when you make believe your maid is your wife. Oh, too soon, Arnold. All right, lads, gather round. You find yourselves in a village on the outskirts of an ensorcelled wood. A what? Ensorcelled wood. What kind of wood? A magical wood. Ah. The evil Lord Targup has betrayed the king and murdered the royal family and most of their loyal subjects. That bastard. However, the three of you, a warrior, a bard, and a rogue, have managed to survive. It's up to you to defeat the vile wizard and bring a semblance of light back to the kingdom. All right, I can get behind that. Grand. You have set out with your horses, a pony, provisions, and a few trusted weapons and find yourselves at the center of a treacherous, overgrown forest. Are you ready? Of course. W ready for what? Oh, yeah. As always, James Stewart, since you're dead, you go first. Well, well what? Do, do I roll? You only roll when you have to. Oh, do I have to now? No. You come to a crossroads in the forest. A rotting, shite-covered sign points the way to Lorenzo's Castle of Endless Torment, where, it is rumored, the kidnapped village maidens have been taken. In the other direction, a cleaner, flower-bestrewn sign announces the way to Eldritch's Tavern and Rest. Ooh, let's do the flowers. Are they pretty flowers? Yes. They are fragrant and pleasing to the eye. Ah, uh, where are the whores? I was told there would be whores. There will be at the end of the correct path. You're really burying the lead, not having them right out in the open. Oh, it will be quite worth it, I assure you, if you reach them alive. This is horse shit. I need some action. Ah, uh, we've just started playing the bloody game. Mr. Stewart, choose your path. Well, I, uh, I, I guess we'll go to the left. Which way is left? Uh, to the spooky castle, I mean. Now, why the would you do that? A tavern at least has drinking, and I presume busty wenches. Am I right, Sean? Yes, that is to be expected, and I'm sure at least one of the wenches to be comely and breastful. See, Grandpa? That's where we should be going. Now, now, you see here. I'm in charge, and, 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 and I've decided we're all good guys. Even the crowd here. 
I, I'm Austrian. A and good guys go where they can help people out. If these village girls have been kidnapped, then we need to rescue them. A a and if one of them chooses to repay us with nubile young flesh, well then, that's a fair part of the deal. I like the way you think, old man. Well, we're, we're all old, really. Uh, our, our outfield can't do any new impressions. So, you take the left road toward the dangerous castle. But alas, you are waylaid along the road by four orcs. Kill them! Kill them! With what do you kill them? With an Uzi 9mm. I'm afraid you only have a staff, a bow, and a broken sword between you. Then I take one of the orcs and break his neck like this. Hey! Ow! That hurts! Ow. Very well. Roll the die. I got the four. The orc is unharmed. But he takes your pony and all of your mead. Ow, mead? Well, I say f*** the orcs. F*** them up their stupid asses. With what shall you f*** them? You have a staff, a bow, and a broken sword. Well, I use the staff. Roll. A 15. You injure the orc, and he makes a hasty retreat. Only two remain. Okay, okay. I use the broken sword. Hack the s*** out of the orc. You need to roll the d- All right. I got a two. I'm afraid the sword breaks even more. The orc is angered. He grabs you viciously, buggery on his mind. Buggery? What kind of game is this? Well, is buggery what I think it is? Yes. And, and, and are orcs what I think they are? No. Alfredo, you may roll to escape, but anything under an 18 will be unsuccessful. Hey, I... Perhaps I should crush Al Pacino's head with a rock to spare him what's coming. Very well. Roll the die. Okay, I got a four again. The rock misses its target. Oh, Alfredo is in a very uncomfortable position right now. Well, w w we still have a bow. Let's shoot the orc that is having his, his, his gleeful way with Mr. Pacino. Oh, I... I can see it all in my mind, very graphic, I, and I'm not known to have an imagination. No, no, this isn't fun anymore. Fun? Was it supposed to be fun? I, I, I rolled a, a 19. Your arrow flies true. The orc, having molested the star of Scarface quite brutally, removes himself and falls dead to the ground. Oh, that was horrible. There is still one orc left, and he is about to steal your bag of gold pieces. We had a bag of gold this whole time. Why didn't we go to the tavern? I, um, hit the orc with the bag of gold pieces. Roll for it. A, a fifteen. Well, what does that mean? The orc's head is split open like an overripe melon showering the area with coins and grey matter. You have triumphed. Well, good. I didn't triumph. No, but you are free to hobble the rest of the way to the castle. Al, come. Here's a hug. You feel better. I don't want to talk about it. The castle looms in the distance, even darker and more terrifying than the villagers warned you it would be. It fills you with the unholy dread of being tied up and at the mercy of all your old ex-wives. Oh, d dear God! That is quite terrifying. Topping the ridge, you see the final orc, the one that made off with your supplies and your pony, apparently mired in quicksand at the bottom of the hill. It's off the beaten path, but it's clearly the same orc. You may either continue to the castle or detour down to the marshes below. Mr. Schwarzenegger? Um, did you say he stole our mead? Indeed, a most delightsome vintage. Well then, 
Maybe. Oh, wait, boys. I think it, it it might be a trick. After all, he he mentioned our ex-wives. Ah, good point. Very well. We continue on to the castle, leaving the the orc to sink in the quicksand. Very well. By the way, it was a ruse. An attempt to get you three mired in the same sucking mud, at the mercy of a very grotesque and randy goblin. You said it was an orc. Right, sorry. And now, a word from our generous sponsor, Sony Entertainment's The Emoji Movie. Is that a thing? Oh, yes. It's the gem in Columbia Pictures' 2017 release schedule. A delightful romp, both mischievous and heartwarming, for the entire family. Especially Asian ones. What's an emoji movie? Uh, they're the little things that you put in text messages. These little faces that are making expressions well, like this. Well, what are text messages? I like the poop one. What? They really made a movie about those? Yes, it's from the famed director of Igor. And Stitch has a glitch. Oh, great. Shawnee Pictures Feature Animation brings you the story of Jean, an emoji who, it turns out, was born with multiple facial expressions instead of the usual single one those around him have. You're making this up, right? Was, was this written on, on an April Fool's Day or something? It was, but it's very real. So... Emoji Gene has an uproarious adventure, keeping his situation a secret from the powers that be, and he must blend in to one of the usual factions, Dauntless, Abnegation, Frigid, Erudite, Amity, and uh, Bicurious. Now you're losing me again. Plus, it's got an all-star cast, featuring the voice talents of Ilana Glazer, Jake T. Austin, Jennifer Coolidge, T.J. Miller, Rob Riggle. Wow, Rob Riggle's in this. I am so there. And the voice of Sir Patrick Stewart as the poop emoji. Oh, you, you have got to be f***ing kidding me. Nope. Catch it in cinemas everywhere on July 28th, 2017. The Emoji Movie. Rated R. Wow, that sounds great. Indeed it does. Now, let us continue with our perilous quest. You emerge from the forest. The castle lies before you, tall and foreboding, casting frightening shadows down upon you. On its highest trestlesses are grotesque figures that may just be stone gargoyles, but could also be watching you with malevolence in their hearts. Well, uh, are they creatures or, or are they stone? <clears throat> They're stone. However, the castle's drawbridge has been lowered, as though you are expected. What if it's a trap? Oh, it's a trap, Arnold. So, wh what do we do? J j just stand here looking at it? Well... It begins to rain heavily. Oh, thanks, Sean. Well, well it, it seems to me we need to make a plan. The animals are drenched. Your provisions are being quickly... Okay, okay. We enter the castle. Jeez. And how do you enter it? Through the ass. What do you mean? We cross the drawbridge. Oh, it was a trap. As you cross beyond the threshold, a barbed barrier rises up behind you, blocking any possible escape. Well, I piss on the barbed barrier. What? Why? I had to go. Roll the die. A seven. You successfully expel urine from your bladder. Ah. So, now what? Uh-oh. Three mutated bugbears, armed with shields and flails, stalk towards you. What the f's a bugbear? A hairy, powerfully built monster, not unlike my second wife. And, and, and what's a flail? Tis a spiked ball attached to a chain, a formidable weapon. What's a shield? Uh-oh, the bugbears separate, attempting to surround you. 
well, should we fight them? Unless one of you needs to expel more waste products. Uh, if you think that would help. The creatures have created a perimeter around you. Okay, I pull out my dagger. The bugbear sees your movement and lurches toward you. Yeah, ma, boo, yeah, ha. What the devil are you doing? I'm fighting. Just roll the die. <sighs> a five. I'm afraid the bugbear has deflected your blows with its shield. It has viciously bitten you. Oh, that rat bastard. More bear than rat. Another one closes on you, Arnold. I punch him in the face with my beefy fist. Very well. Stupid, but very well. Roll. Twenty. Ugh. You have defeated the bugbear. What? By punching him? Uh, again. The, uh, the punch knocks the bugbear off balance and it stumbles backward and off the edge of the drawbridge to a messy death below. There, happy now? No. Mr. Stewart, the third monster lunges at you. I, uh, I cast a spell. You know no spells. I cast Manitoba Chunder. I, I don't know what that is. I rolled a, a 19. Look, I, I never said you were a wizard. You are but a level 2 bard. But I, I rolled a 19. Listen here, there are rules to this game. Now, nobody wants anarchy. I want anarchy. He rolled a 19. <sighs> Manitoba Chunder is successful. The bugbear begins to uh, vomit profusely. The enemy is disabled, but the cobblestones are now quite slippery. Well, I, I take the monster's ball and, and chain and beat him with it. The flail? Well, it's actually Mr. Pacino's turn. Okay, I take the flail and I... You are injured from the bugbear bite. It may well have been infectious. Okay, I, I kill the one that bit me instead. You are getting dizzy, rapidly losing hit points. There was definitely something deadly in that bite. Oh, shit. Arnold, suck out the poison. Where did it bite you? John? On the taint. The taint? Al Pacino's hit points are... Wait, wait, what, what are hit points? His energy is all but gone. Come on, Arnold. Suck out the poison. Please. Look, we don't even know if that will help you. It might not be that kind of poison. Well, it can't hurt, I say. Then you suck it out. I don't want him to do it. That would be creepy. Yes, so very creepy. Al Pacino is about to lose consciousness. Hey now, I've got a great ass. Do it. I'm not sure I like this game anymore. Okay, I force Arnold Schwarzenegger to suck the poison out. Very well. Roll. What? He can't do that. Ooh, baby. A 17. You successfully convinced the big Austrian to service you. No, he didn't. He The he... venom is removed, but you still pass out. Alas, Al, you are rendered immobile for four turns. Mother f Is it my turn now? I force Al Pacino to come over here and let me take a great big... Well, unfortunately, your turn was used in attending to Al Pacino's dark recesses. Sorry. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Of course. Mr. Stewart, it's your turn. Well, I... I kill the thing with the thing. Rolling. Another 19. How is that even possible? Very well. The bugbear is vanquished. It falls and lands in a vomit and blood-covered heap onto the paralyzed body of Al Pacino. Ah, oh, come on! Your band is triumphant. There comes quiet applause from one of the castle's antechambers. What emerges is a lovely young thing, clad in tissue-thin silk that clings to her smooth, delectable flesh 
like a second skin. She is a most comely lass. I step forward. Who are you, good lady? Why, I be the Princess Stivla. I am most grateful for your appearance here. We have come far, hoping to... Surely there is a way I can repay you, noble adventurers. We are in search of some kidnapped... I ache within at your mere presence. All right, all right. I take the woman roughly to bed. Mr. Stewart? Well, I, I ran into my share of comely lashes in the Air Corps. Yes, I, I take her as well. Very well. And Al Pacino can only watch helplessly. But th th that's Before not... Before the lovemaking commences, I feel obligated to warn you that the princess is really Mad Lord Targup in disguise, the dark wizard and mastermind of this whole plot. This, alas, was also a trap. <laughs> Ah, uh, no! <laughs> Don't we have to roll for something? <laughs> Not at this time. Throughout what follows, Al Pacino, motionless and drenched in filth, is forced to watch. Oh, come on! The laughter of the evil wizard echoes off the castle's ramparts, and many dark creatures peek out from the shadows, also wriggling with glee. What? What kind of person would write something like this? Obviously a deranged Parsec Award losing podcaster, living in a basement somewhere, left only to his own sad, twisted imagine- Sir Jean, note for you, sir. What? What is it? Oh, I've got some bad news. Oh, that's a big surprise. Well, sadly, it appears that's all the time we have for today. Apparently, Sony Pictures was not pleased at our promotion of its seemingly delightful emoji movie. They have withdrawn their funding, and we must quit. Of course, you are now free to say what you really think about the film. But it still looks good to me. Yes, I agree. I'm on the fence. Is Patrick Stewart really playing a talking mound of poop? That's Sir Patrick Stewart, and indeed he is. Okay, I'm in. Well, I'm, I for one will not be seeing it. Oh, why is that? Well, because I died in 1997. Oh, 97. A good year. Donny Brasco came out. 1997 was an interesting year for me. I was all over the world, shooting the Avengers movie. Oh, the Avengers is great. I love the part with a hot... Not that adventures. But it still was a good year. Not for me. Batman and Robin came out that summer. Well, I've got you beat. I died a week after that came out. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's the apology for Batman and Robin? Well, I'd like to thank my guests this week. Will all of you join us again in the future? Uh, if we get a new sponsor? No. Hell no. I won't be back. Shows what you know. You'll all be back next time. Rich Outfield only does three impressions. But I hope you and the audience will be back too for the next Celebrity Dungeons and Dragons. Good night. This has been Celebrity Dungeons and Dragons, Episode 1. Written and performed by Rich Outfield. The music in this episode, provided by Kevin MacLeod of Incompetech.com, featuring Curse of the Scarab and Final Battle of the Dark Wizards. Music released under a Creative Commons Attribution license. And remember... Celebrity voice impersonated.